Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Airstream Chronicles and RLC Design. I'm Rich, the site host for both. Um, of course, the Airstream Chronicles is our more for fun blog, and RLC Design is actually our business. And it's a business that is operated out of a 2004 Airstream Safari. So you get to see the background in here. This is what working from an Airstream is like. One thing I'm going to do in the near future is probably move some monitors around here. Um, I think I'd like to move this video capture over here. So I'm here today to talk a little bit more about my drone journey. Uh, I started this series just a couple of days ago and I wanted to bring you an update. So the update is this. My temporary certificate has, uh, has popped up online. Uh, I found that this morning when I went to go do a quick check, so um, I have passed the 107 test. Now I've got the temporary certificate, and soon I'll actually have my little card. Um, so RLC Design is getting ready to offer uh, drone video and photography services to our clients, which is awesome. So I'm pretty excited about that if I seem a little subdued. but. There is a big stepping stone here now. So I have the, uh, the certificate, uh, the temporary certificate, and soon I'll have my license. So what happens next? Well, next is going to be a bit of a waiting game. So if I want to start sharing uh, videos with you, um, I need to be flying in areas that I'm approved to be flying in. Currently, um, I have not filed any certificates of waiver or certificates of authorization because I was waiting on getting my actual license and then I'm going to start putting those in. So why do I need um, these certificates of authorization or waivers? Let's take a look here on screen. Let me just close this for you. So now we're switching over to the screen view and I am on Sky Vector, which shows basically sectional maps um, showing me the different classes of airspace and I happen to live in Prescott Arizona and I live under five miles away from the Ernest A. Love field and what you're seeing that I'm zooming in right now is there's the Love field so the dashed blue line here tells me that this is class D airspace so if I want to fly in that airspace I need to have um, either a waiver or an authorization which I'm going to start applying for these very soon now outside of our blue dashed line here we've got this big magenta circle going further out and so I'm within five miles in class D and then Class E airspace around here extends even further out, all the way up to Paulden, out to Walker and Wilhoit. So, in all honesty, if I want to do things the proper way, um, I need to get a certificate of authorization for the D and the E airspaces. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to fill out two FAA forms. And if I'd like to fly in other areas, I need to check the sectional maps, um, see what airports are in the area, and fill out waivers or authorizations for those. Now, if you've followed along with the Airstream Chronicles or RLC Design, you've probably seen some of the amazing photos in the Granite Dells area. And Granite Dells, um, this is Willow Lake right here. I'm just going to click on that for you. And this is Watson Lake right here, and I live near Watson Lake. So those gorgeous rock formations um, happen to be in Class D airspace. So you won't see any video of me flying around there anytime in the near future. So what do I have to do to uh, start getting these uh, waivers or authorizations? Well, the FAA has got a handy-dandy um, web form here request a Part 107 waiver or operation in controlled airspace. So number one, there's several different types of waivers you can get. So flying at night, flying directly over people. You're not supposed to fly over people. You could injure somebody. 
um, flying from a moving vehicle, um, flying multiple aircraft with only one pilot, uh, flying beyond visual line of sight, flying above 400 feet, flying near airports and controlled airspace. So I will be doing um, a flying at night based on the advice of the folks at Drone U. Um, I'm probably not looking to fly directly over people. And uh, the other part that I want to do is be able to fly near the airports or within their controlled airspace. So walking through this form, you got step 2A, um, apply for a waiver. So that's where I could apply for the uh, flying at night, flying over people. But part 2B is what I'm going to be doing first and foremost because I really want to be able to film around Prescott and share it on YouTube and share it on my websites, both my business website and my For Fun website. This is going to take some time. So this is not an instant thing. And why do I say it's going to take some time? Um, doing uh, one of these airspace authorizations or waivers, once you submit it, uh, the FAA says expect up to 90 days. I know other people who've submitted and they've gone way beyond 90 days. So uh, probably if I start submitting this month, maybe by the end of December, I can have these authorizations. So what do you have to do? Well, they've got a handy dandy PDF form that explains what you're gonna need to do. And then you're going to actually apply for it. So right now, we're not gonna go through any applications or anything. So if you see right here, 2A, apply for a part 107 waiver. I'll just show this to you really quick. And that's for the waiver and I'd have to acknowledge it and then I have a bunch of information to fill out. Um, we're gonna go ahead and close out of that one. So right now here we go this is the one I'm gonna be doing apply for an airspace authorization. Um, so this is short term less than six months. What I've learned from the folks at Drone U um, is that right now people who are applying for authorizations they can apply up to and through uh, June of 2018. Apparently there might be some changes forthcoming. So, or you can do an airspace waiver, which takes longer um, to get approval on. And that's for when you want to uh, waive the airspace for six months or more. So I've got a friend who had put in for a longer term and they're past 150 days on waiting right now. So you have to put your information in. Um, when you want the authorization or waiver to start and when you want it to end, um, what time frames you want, and then you need to put some big information in here, proposed location of uh, operation, and the other big one, description of your proposed op operation, uh, up to 35,000 characters. So this is where you fill in a lot of information and if you miss information that the FAA is interested in, um, your, your certificate of authorization might, uh, might take much longer and you might have to redo things. So, bottom line, spent several weeks uh, studying for the exam, uh, finally taking the exam. Um, go figure, I took it right before uh, Labor Day weekend. So, a little bit of delay uh, because of the long weekend, so I now have my temporary certificate. I'm waiting for the actual card to come from the FAA, and then I'm going to start submitting for all these COAs. And I'm probably not going to see anything back on those for months. In the meantime, what do I do? Well, I can fly under Part 101 as an amateur, and I can continue practice flying and uh, working with video and still photography with drone, but around the Prescott area, I'm not doing anything else. So we won't see any YouTube videos for a bit, and unless I was underneath somebody else's uh, COA, I'm not going to be doing much of anything commercially in the Prescott area for at least three months. So that's where we're at now. And um, it's kind of a, a sticking point, to be really honest. 
So uh, there's a lot of patience involved with this and a, a pretty big learning curve to be sure. Um, I'm, I'm just at the start. So I understand that this is going to take a little while, so I'm up for being a patient guy. But with each of these things taking time, um, there are a lot of people out there who are not patient with the process and they're out there flying and they might even be photographing and doing video for commercial clients and they might be doing that outside of the FAA rules so they could get fined, um, the people they're working for could get fined. It's better to do things the right way but I do understand how some people could become frustrated with the process because like I said one of my friends he's more than 150 days on hearing anything back on his waiver so in the meantime he's still not able to move forward with the drone work he wants to do so I will continue to update because one of the other things that I will be doing while I'm waiting um, is practicing uh, with more drone photography and drone video and also working on my uh, video editing skills with Final Cut and color correction with Final Cut because what comes right out of the camera usually uh, with the drones isn't the greatest stuff in the world. Um, depends on the camera in them but I have a Mavic Pro and I have done a couple of tests with it. Um, done them legally so you know under um, under a hobbyist, uh, the hobbyist rules. So that's why you're not seeing those videos here and my color corrections for those videos yet because that would be uh, more commercial oriented. So we're not going to see those for now. Now, if I go outside of these areas, this D and E, and I take a run over to um, Sheridan Mountain, um, I could do some commercial stuff. And if I head north of Drake, like I'm making my way up to Ash Fork or over to Flagstaff, I could do some uh, commercial video work. And it looks to me like I could even run over to Williams and do some things. So maybe there's a road trip in the near future, um, in the very near future, because I'd like to get out and have a little fun uh, with the flying. It's not just all about what's going on on my website. Um, or what's going on with my business. Um, so far, flying the drone has been really enjoyable. Well, thanks for tuning in and stopping by. Um, I'm going to be I'm geared up to do a whole other set of videos here today as well because we're starting up our new tutorial series on building with WordPress, Xtheme, and WP Engine, and also um, smart search engine optimization, for small business owners who are managing their own